All right, so I'm doing a single layer test with the ASA material. Uh, now that uh, a, a bunch of prints ago, I upgraded the firmware and extruder and heater to all the latest, and it seemed to really improve the quality, which was already uh, pretty good quality, other than I was starting to get some under extrusion. But uh, it seems to be really nice now. And I'd say I did about uh, 10 prints or so with the uh, ASA for my DIY VZ330 build. And uh, I need to switch to TPU to print a few grommets for that. And I realized, you know what, I never did another, I did a whole bunch of single layer tests before I updated the firmware and things. And so I should do one uh, now with all those things updated. And I also never did one with ASA. And ASA is my favorite material to print with. It just always, I always found it printed so clean with like minimal string. That was the big thing. When, when I was much newer to 3D printing and the printers weren't nearly as good. And uh, I always liked the way ASA printed. And so uh, I decided to, before I switched to TPU, do a single layer uh, test with the ASA. Tough to see, tough to really tell here. You know better than me. I did just clean this glass the other day. Maybe I need to clean it again. It's been a few months and without being cleaned. And so I cleaned it, but it uh, looks like I need to clean it again. Uh, did a great job, evidently. So I see a little bit of a defect there, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, so what, what I did here also, though, I did, I narrowed the line width, the minimum line width to 0.23 millimeters. And from what I understand, it, it to, to calculate the max uh, line width, it just doubles the minimum line width. And so the printer can vary the line width. Some people don't know that, I expect. Uh, you can, that the printer, that the software will, or something will, adjust the line width, I guess the slicer will adjust the line width in order to best um, accommodate the final desired geometry, specified geometry. And I found that if I got too low on the Z offset, uh-oh, we're, we're out of focus. If I got too low on the Z offset, that it would make ridges on the print. And so I decided, that, okay, well, if I go with a little bit narrower line, so the default line, minimum line width was 0.3 millimeters, since we doubled that, it's 0.6. Oh, geez, that's weird that it was that wide. I mean, it's a, it's a 0.4 millimeter diameter nozzle orifice, so that's the inside diameter of the nozzle. But there is a flat surface on the tip of the nozzle, and so that probably is 0.6 millimeters or so. I'm not sure what that, what that is, and it would be really hard to measure because it's a... Uh, it's uh, it's tapered, so it's hard to you can't just put your calipers on it to measure it because it's tapered and it'll just slide off the end or you'll be up higher and you're gonna throw your number off one way or another. Um, you know maybe you could like put some put it push it on a stamp pad and push it against paper and then measure that. But even still, how are you gonna be accurate? I don't know how you measure that. You need some sort of optical comparator or some super high res lidar or who knows how you could maybe there's a way all right there's a challenge for people uh, come up with a way to measure the actual outside diameter of the contact patch of the that's what we call it contact patch of the nozzle but in any case i made it small i made the line with smaller to, to try to take that out of the uh equation and it looks like it's mostly pretty good although let's say uh this area here I seem to be getting a little bit of, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it could be that that's just a, a contaminated spot on the bed. Uh, like the, got oil on it, like I touched it and took a little bit of oil on it or something, potentially. Tough to say for sure. I did see on Reddit recently, somebody asked a question and showed a picture, you know, what's wrong with my print, and it was, it was sort of a similar thing. It was a much bigger patch, and it was much uglier than that. Um, but, and there were various answers, and my first thought was it kind of looks like Z offset too low, 
but but on the other hand it didn't seem like it was just ridged it was also somewhat peeled it was also somewhat lifted slightly off of the bed with some sort of voids showing and that indicated to me that it's probably different than a Z offset issue in that case um, and some of the answers corroborated that it's probably contamination on the bed and clean the bed and, and I saw one good point uh, I don't remember who, who posted it but uh, that sometimes alcohol may not get all the grunge off that you would hope or you would think maybe would and that uh, dish soap and uh, scrub it good and then alcohol and that really made sense to me uh, so that may be the way to go so I, I suspect that that's just I need to clean my bed because the rest of it looks uh, very clean from what I can tell here tough, again tough to say I have my phone out at arm's length I'm standing behind a tripod with another camera that's uh, streaming live that I'm totally dissing right now because I have my camera in front of that totally blocking its view <laughs> But hey, it's my stream anyway, so who cares? So it's that's uh, that's my uh, judgment call. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm gonna stand here for this whole thing because it's probably got. Let's see. It says it's got. Uh, I can't even read it from here. Maybe I can read it with the phone. Uh, I can't tell. I can't tell what that says. Sixteen minutes down. 15 minutes to go. I likely will not stand here for another 15 minutes. If I do, my uh, shoulder muscles are going to be jacked because <laughs> they're already it's already tired. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll uh, we'll see how this comes out and uh, we'll revisit it in a bit. All right. Actually, I just realized this is probably pretty hot. Because the ASA prints at 100 degrees, but anyway, if in case you missed it earlier, I decided to 3D print the uh, single layer test. Now that uh, now that I've re uh, updated the firmware extruder and heater to all the latest uh, a few days ago, and then I've done about 10 or so big batch prints with ASA, and also realized I haven't done a single layer test in ASA, and so I might as well do it. I did uh, leave the calibration checked, and so it should be pretty flat. I do see here quite a bit of areas where it seems to be the Z height seems to be a little low, which is interesting because I thought I compensated for that or I attempted to compensate for that with uh, with the narrowing the line width. But evidently, that's not enough to do it. Strangely, it's just in, it's mostly in the corners, although it's a little bit here too. A little bit here too. I'm not sure how well you can see this. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely an effective first layer, and a lot of it looks really nice. But definitely some spots of, uh, especially in the corners for some reason, in the, along the, this border here. Definitely a little too close on the Z offset. I also didn't clean the bed. I probably should have cleaned the bed thoroughly, got all the glue off. There's some varying thicknesses of, uh, of glue. Haven't, I, I haven't re-glued it in many, probably 10 prints, I'm guessing. And so maybe I'll, re actually, maybe I'll, I may re redo this. I may uh, peel this off and, and clean the bed thoroughly and then redo this print with calibration. I wonder, geez, did I also, I wonder if I did, uh, after I did all that, I must have done a, I must have redone the input shaping. I must have, I mean, if I didn't, that was silly of me. But let's see if I can peel this off. I'll peel it off from this corner, that way that it doesn't, uh, less chance that I separate lines during removal. I'm going to use the spatula. Actually, you know what? It's a good test to just peel it off. I'm just going to peel it off. Alright. That went pretty smoothly. Backside, super nice. 
Yeah, a couple, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Probably, again, probably contaminated bed. A couple cracks there. If I curl, if I curve it, if I curve it with the grain, I find that's a good test of, uh, well, really good, uh, no, no creases anywhere. Except for those two spots where it's obviously contaminated. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean the bed thoroughly. I probably won't, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do the soap thing even. There's a spot here. Must have been something on the bed. This is the top side. I'm pretty clean. Bottom side. Very, I want to say clean, but it's the opposite of clean because there's a bunch of dirt. <laughs> so much dirt, I can see it. You can see all these little spots. I mean, that's just contaminants. It's been so many prints. So I am going to redo this. But this is cool. I mean, I'm very, ha I'm very satisfied with this. I can obviously, if I really cared enough about the first layer, I could definitely, uh, I could definitely um, adjust the Z offset slightly to get rid of these. Uh, two lows on the Z offset. Another thing I noticed is that uh, the before I updated the firmware, it was doing something goofy in one of the corners and on one of the borders when I did this whole print. And it was, it, you know, it was it even, it wasn't, uh, I want to say it wasn't in the, pre, in the slicer preview. So it was something weird, it was some bug. And it was, it was, it was offsetting some things a little bit. So evidently, by shown, demonstrated by this, the uh, firmware update corrected that bug, so that's good. So uh, all, all in all, this is really good, other than my lack of uh, quality preparation of the print surface. So I'm going to uh, clean my bed, redo this, and we'll see how it goes. And then I'm going to print some TPU parts after that. So uh, stay tuned and have some good content today.